Welcome to the stage, Jim Caldwell, Chief Creative Officer. It looks like there are a few people in the room, and those of you that aren't here yet, I'd suggest you come in. <laughs> well, welcome to this amazing gathering that's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Oh, man. We did it. We're here. We're live, and we're virtual. You know, we've got about, I don't know, 1,700, 1,800, maybe 2,000 people coming in from around the world right now. And of course, those of you that made it here, congratulations, because I know it was not easy getting here, was it? I know also on the virtual level, there are a ton of watch parties, so let's see if we can hear them screaming and yelling right now. Yeah? <laughs> Exactly. Well, we're going to be having some fun. You know, the amount of uh, knowledge and wisdom and insight and perspective that you're going to see and hear over the next two days is going to be really meaningful for you. Uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you that you're going to be exposed to information uh, and approaches, uh, business building skills, uh, inspiration, you name it, it's going to be happening uh, over the next two days. So good for you that you're here, good for all of you across the world that have joined us because it is going to be a fantastic party loaded with information that you can put to work uh, in the next five minutes or next week or whatever. Uh, so are you ready for X49? Yeah. Right? It's going to be amazing. It really is going to be a moment. It's a pivotal time for the company, let's face it. I mean, we have gone so far in 17 years, and certainly in the last three years, but it's been nothing short of amazing, hasn't it? I mean, think about it. David's talked about it multiple times, you know, 10 times the size of what we were just three years ago. I mean, that kind of growth, I don't care who the company is, is, is just fantastic. So don't squander the opportunity that you're presented with right now. Take advantage because what you're going to learn is just going to be amazing. Make it count, pay attention, ask good questions along the way. So, as you've seen, we're, we're paying attention to COVID. Uh, you know, be smart. Let, we're, we're trying to be good stewards of your safety. So, so be aware of that. You know, it is a reality we have to deal with. Some of us are, are like, you know, do push back, but it is what it is, right? So just be careful. Think about it. Be considerate of your neighbors. Uh, and uh, the registration desk, of course, will be open throughout the day. If you have to go to the restroom, you can come and go as you please, but don't stay away too long because you might miss something. So first of all, who's here? How many states? How many countries? Name out your country. Let me hear your state. That's what I thought. <laughs> From everywhere, right? I mean, we're, we're talking something like total between in-person and from around the world, we got like 35 countries represented. So we truly are a global concern. And of course, it is amazing, isn't it? How far we've come. So um, I'm curious also, who's been in the business at LifeWave less than three months? Show of hands. Come on now, raise those hands. Look at that. Come on now. Well, you're, when you think about it, right, this is your first exposure to a convention for LifeWave, and by far it's going to be the biggest and best we've ever done, so it's excellent timing on your part. Now, next question is, how many managers in the room? I'm curious. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Congratulations, you know. Your career path has started, so it's good to know you have so much you're going to be learning over the next couple of days that's going to really infuse you 
with excitement and enthusiasm about possibilities and where we can go. And the other question I want to ask is, how many have been in this business 10 years or more? There go the hands. There are a few. How about, yeah, <laughs> how about 15 years or more? Look, see, think about that. Yeah, think about that. How about 17 years? <laughs> David Jumper, look at the main man, Mark. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, Thomas, how you doing over there? Taking the corner seat for Pete's sakes. Well, look, it's great to have you here. Think about it. We have a rainbow of everybody. Think about the folks that couldn't make it. I mean, Taiwan, I just got to tell you, Taiwan is like this in terms of growth. They, they wanted to be in the top 50. Uh, you know, last year they were looking for that. They hit 41 for the year of, uh, or 42, for the year of 2020, right? They're shooting for to be in the top 30 this year. Next year, they're shooting to be in the top 20 of all network marketing companies in Taiwan out of 324 companies. And none of them are here because the quarantine is such a challenge, right? But they wanted to be here. Think about all the people that wanted to be here that can't be. Anyway, so, you know, we're going to be thinking of you because we know you're there in spirit and absolutely here virtually. So, what else should I be telling you? I think that's about it. Let's get started. You know, uh, think back to where LifeWave was 17 years ago. Think about what David was doing in that time. You know, he had a choice. How is he going to take this incredible technology that he'd developed for military applications and then things changed at 9-11 and our armed forces, our military leadership wasn't interested in the type of R&D that he was involved with at that time. And so he said, well, wait a second. I've got this technology. What can I do with it? And he took meetings, you know, the typical things you can do with a brand new product. You go meet with this retail company, that retail company. How should I do this? What's possible? And then some folks started whispering in David's ear about network marketing. And was that ever a wonderful thing? Because here we are 17 years later, right? David chose network marketing as the form to a, a way to get this technology out there. Because think about it. You put a sleeve on a shelf. How do you know what that does? How is that going to possibly be successful jumping off the shelf? So he knew this ability to have face-to-face -face conversations, which network marketing is all about, would be the way to take the, the company out. And so he started. But did he start with, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 clinical studies? No. He started with zero. Did he have all kinds of patents on the technology to prove and to back up and to, to document what he'd created? No, he did not. So think about the veterans. Think about those that started with David then. How much did you really have, David Jumper? What did you really have, right? But you, you had a vision. You, you saw what David saw, right? And so it began, and the first year, because of this amazing thing that happened with the Olympics where some uh, swimmers, uh, along with Richard Quick, who's the namesake of our Richard Quick uh, uh, excellence award that we put out every year. Uh, there he was with swimmers wearing patches and they were achieving personal bests. And the Olympic Anti-Doping Committee says, wait a minute, you got some drugs going in the body. You can't be doing that. And, you know, David's going, well, wait a second, there's no drugs. And they said, prove it. So off it goes for all the typical testing that the Olympics would want to have done. And they come back and say, well, much to our amazement, it is hermetically sealed. There is nothing going into the body, so we're not quite sure how that's working, but yeah, it appears to be non-drug. And that put LifeWave on the map because it was press across the country, and that helped get the name and the brand out there. And the first year, this company did $17 million in sales. Now, I don't care who you are with any business. You start from nothing, and a year later, you've done $17 million in sales. That's, a, that's an accomplishment, and that was the beginning. And of course, all the different products that came from David's lab, energy, sleep, pain, stress, skin, mood. Um, look, I'm reading stamina, focus, strength, right? And then X39. X39. Was that an amazing moment? There we were, right? You know, David tells a story that, you know, he was thinking about what's my next product going to be? And he was 
off in the middle of nowhere uh, enjoying himself, and he had this epiphany, you know, these types of things that he gives credit to not himself, but a higher power, right? And he says, wait a second, I've got that patch on the shelf. Maybe that's the next one. Well, it's X39 because it was his 39th patch that he developed, and that was the working title. Next thing you know, get some samples out. You folks that got those samples early on in June, July, August of 18, right, 18, yep. And next thing you know, it was like, whoa, what is this? What is this product? This is unbelievable. It's doing this and this and this and this so much. And the rest is history. We launched it in Muncie, Austria in January of 2019, and the rest is history. You know, we talk about Japan, uh, which we will tomorrow. We'll get into a little bit of their success tomorrow. But uh, they, they were, you know, idling along uh, relatively off the radar uh, in terms of sales revenue in, in January of 19. And, and here we are now, three years later, and they're, you know, our number one fastest growing country in the world, growing like this. And here's the amazing fact. Regulatory in Japan is difficult to work with, and you uh, can't say much about X39 or our other products. You can't even associate X39 with activating stem cells. Can't say it. And yet, <laughs> Japan became the fastest growing country in the world. Why? Because of product performance, right? People telling people, the holy grail of network marketing, the whispering down the lane was breathtaking. And that pulled Japan forward. And of course, now we've built out the staff, we have collateral, we're doing all kinds of things in Japan, which you'll hear about tomorrow. But that's the amazing thing, isn't it? You can count on the technology, can't you? Right? That's what's exciting. You hand a patch to somebody, which it's all about Slap a patch on and watch what happens. Chuck Michael says, you know, when you, you who is our number one money earner in the company since day one, uh, he says, when you get that question, well, how does it work? Tell me how it works. And what does Chuck say? What has he said for years? Well, I'm not exactly sure I can tell you exactly how it works, you know, but let me tell you what happened to a friend of mine. Let me tell you what happened to me. And you get into storytelling and emotionally engaging. And that's what LifeWave is, isn't it? It's a powerful story. You develop your own story, right? You learn of other stories, and you develop this ability to just tell stories that emotionally engage the listener, you know? That's what's key, and if you can do that, you know, it's kind of the art of deflection. Don't try to be an expert like David, saying all these incredible things about how the product works. You can get to do that. You can learn to do that, but you don't really have to because it's not what it is, it's what it does in terms of benefits, right? Sell the sizzle, not the... Was it sell, sell the steak, not the sizzle? Sell the sizzle, not the steak? <laughs> One of those two, right? So anyway, we're on a roll. It's going to be an excellent two days. 5,000, Inc. 5,000, what about that, by the way? Think about recognizing the fact that we've achieved this incredible growth and we hit the Inc. 5000 this year. Come on, kind of cool, right? For those of you listening in virtually, you know, Inc. Magazine every year does a list of who are the fastest growing 5,000 companies in the United States. They used to do the Inc. 500. Then they did the Inc. 5000. We've been on that list four times, the fourth being this last time, announced in October uh, of uh, 2021, number 1002. So there you go. We're fast growing and you know it. So remember, yeah, exactly. One last thing I'll tell you. You know, this whole thing about storytelling, which LifeWave is an incredible story. Think about what the dynamics really are going on when you tell a story. There was a recent feature in the US on television talking about how the medical community had confirmed that different parts of the brain light up when a person's listening to a story. And in fact, as a person becomes engaged with the story that you're telling, brain waves of that person listening actually start to synchronize with the storyteller. 
So think about that. Someone's hearing a story, and gray matter <laughs> is affected, and the next thing you know, you intellectually nudge the cerebral dials within the brain that make us take action, right? You open the mind. People start to realize, wait a second, I think I'm comfortable hiking into the wilderness of my intuition where I can trust and believe because people need to trust and believe, don't they, right? So it's not about, hey, let me tell you about this product. It's fantastic. Let me talk at you, at you, at you. No. You just tell that story. And when you see that they're nodding their head and you have that conversation, next thing you know, people say, well, can I try that? I'd like to try that. Because that's all you want, isn't it? You want them to try the product because you can count on the technology to perform. In the, va in the vast jungles of electronic commerce, stories are how we regain seamless entry into the human psyche. So I've said it. Stories are important. Facts tell, stories sell. We've heard that forever, right? You emotionally engage the listener. What did Zig Ziglar, the famous uh, sales uh, trainer, Incredible guy, he talked about emotional logic in enrollment. Combine logic and reasoning with emotion, and the rest kind of unfolds. So, I know your trust and belief is through the roof, and we're going to be having some fun, and it's going to be an amazing two days. I think I've probably said that, haven't I? <laughs> so, let's get into it. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure next to bring up someone who... I want to make sure you get to know her briefly today and then tomorrow she's going to spend a significant amount of time talking about what she's going to be able to do and what she intends to do for LifeWave, okay? She's been in the world of uh, 30 years deep marketing experience. That, that's her world. And she's going to be speaking several times over the next couple of days but I want to give you a sense of what she's going to do for us in 2022 and beyond. She's dedicated her career to helping companies define, communicate, and activate their brands. Her purpose-driven marketing approach marries digital strategy with fresh, creative storytelling. There's that storytelling again, right? The power of story. Having held executive roles at some of the world's most successful direct selling companies, consulted across a broad spectrum of companies from startups to Fortune 100 companies, and led multiple digital agencies servicing iconic brands. Sounds like a pretty good resume, doesn't it? Lori's uniquely honed experience yields the consistent results of brand amplification, exceptional customer experience and sales growth. And of note lately, she was just appointed to the customer service board at the University of California. So you know she knows a thing or two about the customer journey and the importance of a stellar customer experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our executive consultant, Lori Berger. today? No, come on. How are we doing this morning? That's much better. I want to give a special thank you to Jim for all the kind words. Isn't he passionate about our purpose? He is one of a kind. I've learned so much from him since I've been here. I want to also give a welcome to all of our virtual attendees for coming here today. I know that you're here from, you know, near and far from all different time zones. I know some of the, it's your morning, some it's your evening, and we just are so grateful that you can join us. Make sure that you're you using that chat, engaging with your community online, and you're actually letting us know where you're from and what you're excited about the next couple days. So, 
I also want to make sure that you're following us on our social channels. Jim mentioned I'm really passionate about digital because I know how much that can create that health and wellness movement. The more people that can share our story and our purpose, the more we can get our name out there. It really helps with that brand awareness. You know, the last two years has been very challenging on many fronts for many, and our goal more than ever before is to bring true wellness around the world. We're a global company with expanding footprints every single year to more and more countries, more and more families and homes around the world. This convention is integral to kick off that health and wellness journey for all of us into the future. And this weekend is going to really help you see the vision of where we're going as a company. I only have you for a few minutes this morning, but over the next couple days, tomorrow I'm going to share in my segment, uh, it's about a half hour, where we're going as a business and how we're going to partner on this together. It is incredible. We have a plan. How does that sound? We have a vision and we're going to do this in partnership with all of you. People are prioritizing their health as never before, and which is ultimately going to lead to a happier and healthy planet. And we as a nation have to make sure that we are purpose-driven in everything we do. It's not just about the profit. So we are at the forefront of this mission with these incredible products I came here because of the health technology that David has blessed us with, and I'm staying here for the community and all of you. I have been able to meet with so many over the last couple of days, and I'm just so impressed with your stories and your testimonials, your transformations of your health. If there's one thing that I want you to walk away with after the next couple of days, one feeling, if you could summarize it in one word, it's belief. Belief in where we're going as a company, belief in our products, and belief in yourself and your success. So sit back, enjoy, take lots of notes. Again, make sure you're sharing on social media. We want to come out of this convention with a huge health and wellness movement, making sure everyone knows what our patches are all about. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again tomorrow. You know, before we go any further, I would be remiss if I didn't thank our staff. Uh, you know, you think about what it takes. I, I know a lot of you. Yeah. The last, the last uh, you know, two, three weeks, it's been, uh, you know, 15, 20-hour days getting ready for this. There's so much. And, of course, we, we brought in uh, a, a huge production group that came down here with a big fat 18-wheeler truck, the whole bit, uh, to pull this off. So just thank you to all on our staff and all the great tireless work that they've done. For sure. All right. So it's this next individual I know you all know. We love him. He's fantastic. He's an incredible businessman. He had a, he had a wide range of success before he started LifeWave, right? And then came LifeWave. And it's been a continuum of this, of this amazing success. Of course, thanks to you. This is a partnership, isn't it? Without you, we, David, LifeWave has no company. So we know it's a working together dynamic, which of course is powerful and it will get more powerful over time. And David is so committed to this model and loves watching and witnessing not only the benefits from the product as he hears hundreds of stories monthly. You know, imagine how gratifying that is for him. But he also knows that he's at the helm of, of a company that's doing something different. I don't care how big your company is. We know there's billion dollar, $10 billion, $50 billion, $100 billion companies. Okay, they're having success, but none of them in the health, wellness, health technology business are able to do what we are doing, what he has invented. And that's amazing, right? So, 
a, a man with an incredible heart uh, who absolutely cares. It's never about the money. It's about helping individuals enjoy greater health and wellness. And so without further ado, let's bring out our CEO, inventor, founder, David Schmidt. Thank you very much. Uh, this weekend is our 17-year anniversary. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you here and everyone that's watching virtually. Uh, thank you so much for being here to celebrate our 17-year anniversary. Uh, it's incredible where we've come from a very, very humble start. And I'm delighted and feel very grateful uh, that we have this opportunity to share with one another. And what we're going to be talking about this morning is age reversal and how we're actually going to go about and achieve that. And you'll see some new things that you haven't seen before. And to commemorate this get-together, our first live event since all the uh, global craziness started, uh, and to commemorate our 17-year anniversary. We're going to open up the doors to our research laboratory, and you're going to get an opportunity to see things that we have never revealed before. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you right from the start that some of this is going to surprise you, I think in some really good ways, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, Let's get started with this. Uh, so we're going to first start out in a place where we're going to be talking about some of the history behind age reversal. And we're going to look at what modern science has to say about this. And what's actually very interesting is that there are stories of people in the past living to be hundreds of years old. And as it turns out, those stories are probably true and we're going to look at what could be the reason behind why people doing certain things or living at a certain time were not aging. We'll start with something called the Philosopher's Stone. You can go back thousands of years, and there's even people that will make a case that the reason why Moses took gold out of Egypt was so that he could convert that gold into the Philosopher's Stone and this became what we would refer to as manna, and it was the manna that was keeping the Israelites alive as they traveled through the desert for 40 years. Uh, but we're going to look at a more recent reference at 300 AD uh, when the story of the Philosopher's Stone first started to show up in some writings. And it was initially this idea of alchemy where base metals were going to be turned into gold. So turning lead or mercury into gold. So what in the world would that have to do with age reversal or staying young? There's another reference here, uh, Sir Thomas Brown in 1643, where he is connecting gold to divinity. And again, this seems rather odd at first. What would converting gold into something uh, that would keep us alive for a really long time, what does that have to do with divinity? There are other references that show gold being turned into a white powder. And so at first, this seems really unusual. We all know what gold and other metals look like. So it seems fantastical uh, that you could change gold into something other than itself and yet even something that could be consumed. How could we get gold into a white powder? Well, interestingly enough, in around the 1990s, this fellow David Hudson, uh, who is a miner, not like a little miner, <laughs> miner mining things out of the earth, 
Um, that's a joke from Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest reference, sorry. Um, couldn't help it. But uh, ah, some of you like Galaxy Quest, okay. Yeah, the orphan Star Trek movie. Um, so David Hudson started to find that there were materials that he was mining that were not showing up under laboratory analysis. In other words, you could take 100 grams of gold or, or you could take 100 grams of ore, you could weigh it, and let's say 99% was identifiable. And then there was this other thing that was not identifiable. And uh, he was able to eventually determine that it was this white powder of gold, and he set about and found a way through many, many years of development of how exactly to change gold into a white powder that you can consume. We've done this in our laboratory. So I can tell you from personal experience that this is something that actually works. So then it raises the question, if in these ancient texts, people were talking about consuming this white powder of gold and it allowed them to live for hundreds of years, could those stories be true? Because now we've shown that gold can be turned into this white powder, right? So there's a biblical view on aging. So let's take a look at this another way. So God created us as perfect and essentially immortal, right? Where we would never age, we would never get sick, uh, we'd never die. And the interesting thing here is we look at what does the Bible actually tell us about changes in human lifespan? So first it tells us that we were perfect beings and then we sin and now our lifespan is limited to about a thousand years old, right? Not so bad. Adam died at 9.30. Um, yeah, not so bad. So of course we know the story that mankind was very sinful, uh, a lot of bad things going on and God decides, okay, we're gonna wipe out most of the people on the earth and we're gonna start over. Um, and if you ever study this, it's rather interesting because there's the, the water from Noah's flood has actually been discovered under the earth now. And the Bible gives a reference to this, that the earth opened up, swallowed the waters. Well, it was discovered just about two, three years ago that there is a cavity filled with enough water under the earth to uh, cover all of the land on the surface of the earth raises the question of where did that water come from in the first place, uh, but we know where the water is. Uh, there's other evidence to Noah's flood, but that's really not the important thing. The important thing is that after the flood, lifespan was limited now to 120. So can we correlate this with any type of scientific facts? We can we know that the Earth's magnetic field and other properties of the Earth were very different thousands of years or millions of years ago, depending on, what you look at, depending on what you look at. Some people put it as the Earth's magnetic field at about four times stronger than it is today. Other people put it at hundreds of times stronger than it is today. So we have uh, over 70 patents on this technology, and it's designed to mimic the naturally occurring energy field that we see in the human body, in our DNA, and in our cells. And the key to the efficacy of this device is by producing very, very low intensity magnetic fields and a longitudinal field, which is something separate, but in any case, we're mimicking conditions that existed thousands of years ago. And what we have found is that this device can dramatically accelerate human healing and potentially uh, be a device that we could use to slow down uh, and even prevent the aging process. So in other words, there's scientific evidence that these biblical references to enormous lifespans are true. So let's use an example of something that we can do right now to change the way we age, okay? 
So this is gonna be an exercise uh, where you can live longer. This is something you can incorporate into your daily life. You can live longer and live healthier. Sound good? Yes. Yeah, come on, that's not convincing. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's talk about something you can do right now to live healthier and live longer. We're going to, it's not anger. I'll give you a hint, it's not anger. Uh, I wanna start by looking at what happens when we are in a state of anger. Okay, being in a state of anger, uh, normal human response, and sometimes we can use being angry at something to drive us and to motivate us. I have always had an anger response to people that pollute. I don't know what it is. From when I was very young, I'd see people throw trash out in nature. It would promote an anger response from me, all right? So sometimes these things can be healthy because they motivate you to find solutions. In any case, staying in a state of anger, not so good because it's going to produce um, a stress response. And in fact, this stress response can actually damage cells in our brain. Not only does it damage cells in the brain, but it damages cells in the brain and the most important part are areas of reason and judgment. And so if we stay in a state of anger for a long enough period of time, not only does it cause brain damage, but it also reduces levels of serotonin, uh, which is one of the neurohormones that is going to allow us to be into a state of happiness. We also see that when people are in a state of prolonged stress and prolonged anger, that this can have long-term implications on our cardiovascular health and our immune health. One thing on these slides I would point out to you is that look at when we are in a state of anger and stress and we have elevated level, levels of cortisol, the number of cells that are infected by a virus goes up. I am self-proclaimed conspiracy theorist, I'll tell you that right away. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, just because conspiracies are true doesn't mean it's a conspiracy. And, um, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so, you know, I find it always suspicious that the government wants to keep us in a lockdown, in a state of fear, where we are angry, and it's making the virus worse. Not such a good thing. Um, we don't want to do that. Instead, let's respond to these things by being in a state of love, because a state of love is empowering, okay? So by being in a state of love, it is exactly the opposite to being in a state of anger. We get reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. Of course, we get reduced stress. And guys, if you'll notice the very first line there, especially if you're in a committed relationship, okay, for all of you that guys that may be on the, the fence there, going into a committed relationship is a great thing and it can help you actually live longer, okay? So. Uh, <laughs> worth mentioning. Okay, so, um, there has to be a reason for this though, and because we want everything to be science-based and evidence-based, uh, we wanna be able to look to nature for solutions, understand what exactly is happening, and so we can mimic this with technology or changes in our behaviors. Uh, let's see if we can understand what's going on. So when we're in a state of love, our body is going to release the hormone oxytocin. So oxytocin is very, very closely associated to that feeling when you're first in love or you're in a loving relationship. And so I'm sure all of us have experienced that at one time or another. So the question is, if that is what's happening hormonally in the human body, what effect is this having on us? 
So there was a study that was done at uh, UC Berkeley, and UC Berkeley has done a, a number of really interesting studies on reversing human aging. Bruce Ames is uh, one of the scientists there. But in this particular study, they wanted to see what was going to happen if we took um, muscle cells and we took muscle fibers. What's going to happen if we expose them to oxytocin, the hormone of love? So first, on the left, is what we would uh, look to be healthy muscle fibers, and we can see that as we age, one of the consequences is that the quality of the muscle degrades. And this is a uh, very, very significant problem, of course, because as our muscle quality degrades and the amount of muscle tissue as we atrophy age-related sarcopenia, we're going to have a reduction in strength and stamina, we'll start to lose bone density, we become weak and frail, our immune system becomes compromised, and uh, we don't want to spend the last years of our life being in a state of overall weakness. So what do we do? We expose the cells to oxytocin and we get an age reversal effect. The muscle tissue would regenerate. Now, if only someone could invent something that would <laughs> allow us to regain our strength and stamina, that would really be something. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, you might hear something about that later. Okay. <laughs> So, um, what about modern scientists today? Uh, you're going to hear from two of them in some videos that we have. But what are people saying today about the potential of human lifespan? We've been very, very much out there saying that this is a goal that we have as a company and this is something that we're going to achieve, human age reversal. So, Ray Kurzweil is a very well-known futurist. He's the chief technology officer at Google. And he would say that uh, within our lifetime, let's say within 20 years, no more than 50 years, that human lifespan will, technology will be such that human lifespan will be at 1,000 years. And over that period of time, you know, if we don't destroy ourselves, uh, human beings could potentially live in a physical body forever. Whether or not that's desirable is another thing. Uh, so we should establish, if we're setting age reversal as a goal, uh, we should establish a reason to do it, right? Th this is something that we should take very seriously, and there should be a good reason for reversing human aging. So what would it be? Well, the first thing is that aging is a disease. It's, there is nothing normal about aging. Our cells break down, we're susceptible to disease because our immune system begins to fail. Uh, this is a breakdown in cell communications. Our mitochondria doesn't work as well, so our body's not producing as much energy, and this means we can't repair damaged tissue as quickly. People start to feel lethargic. Uh, so aging is a disease, and that's one of the reasons why we should be interested in stopping it. So aging is going to reduce a person's ultimate potential. If we look at the amount of knowledge that people can accumulate over the course of their lives, and then what happens? Maybe they're in a profession for 40 or 50 years, and they say, well, I'm getting old, I have to retire. And yet this person is incredibly valuable. And so wouldn't it be great if we could stop aging and reverse the aging process so that people could continue to have a rewarding and fulfilling life and they can make a contribution to society. If we stop the aging process and we reverse it, think about how people's mindsets will change. We're now, the world that we live in, people will think differently that, well, I'm going to be here for a few hundred years, so it'd be really great to have a clean planet to live on where we don't have polluted air or polluted water or polluted food, right? 
So if we can get more people thinking this way, uh, it could be incredibly great for the planet. Um, and this gets into how society could potentially change. Maybe even the way people think about war would change, right? There's always been throughout history wars and the threats of wars. We're living through some right now that aren't too much fun. And maybe if people were thinking, well, since I'm not going to age and that's an outcome, and now I have to, I can't be just thinking, well, that's my kid's problems to deal with. No, it's, it's our problem. We have to deal with it now. So maybe we can get society to change. And I do think this leads to a path um, where this is absolutely great for the planet, where we have to rethink what are we doing on how we provide food to people and get them proper nutrition and uh, we can't just simply dump garbage in the ocean anymore, right? We can't do these things. So we have to find solution for these problems. And the, the last one I think is, is really interesting, or this item is really interesting for empowerment, if that if you knew that you were not going to age, then you'd also say, well, I'm going to be living in a young, healthy body. And because I'm young and healthy, I don't need to worry about disease. And the longer that we live, the more that technology advances, like stem cell technology, we know that we can be outpatients in the future to things that today might be a very, very long hospital stay or it might even be life-threatening. So being able to live in a young, healthy body empowers us. And that's exactly where the power should be, with each of us individually. We should not be depending on government and a healthcare system that doesn't really work. We should have the power ourselves. So I'd like to ask you to think about that a little bit this weekend. How would it affect your life personally if aging was no longer an outcome. So how do we get there, right? Sounds good, uh, <laughs> sounds really good. So how do we get there? Well, the answer is simple, we study nature because the answers have already been given to us. We just have to study nature and unlock these secrets and we'll find the answers. And the beauty of this is that we don't have to invent a drug that has toxic side effects. Uh, we will do things that are in harmony with nature and with our body. So here are some of the things that we look at in our lab uh, that you've heard me talk about before. So lobsters don't age. Uh, they actually get stronger with age. And usually people associate this in the scientific community with the telomeres, that the cells can continue to divide an infinite number of times. But actually, I've made a discovery uh, about how lobsters do not age, and we've created a piece of new technology. Uh, it's not a patch. Uh, we've created a new technology now to mimic the way that lobsters don't age. And I'm going to show you some of the results of that uh, today. Um, this is another one that's really fascinating, uh, ants. We've been doing some experiments with ants in our laboratory. We never sacrifice ants. We never torture them, right? I'm not, I'm not Dr. Fauci torturing puppies. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're going to study these ants. We put them in an environment. And what we look at, we have uh, uncovered the mechanism by which ants don't age, and we've created another technology that mimics this. I'm going to show this to, this to you today as well. Uh, glass sea sponge. This is one we haven't gotten to yet, but it's interesting uh, because how in the world do we see that they can have these lifespans of thousands of years, up over 10,000 years old? But that's yet another example. Uh, tardigrades. Tardigrades are also known as water bears. They're microscopic. 
and they are incredibly resilient. There's even been experiments where they were brought up into space and um, they survive and you can take the water out of them and you add water and they come back to life. So these are things that we want to understand. How are they doing these things? Uh, and that's a path. Now there's some ways, uh, some things that we look at that we're going to get into detail, but basically when we're looking at aging, we want to study how do the cells produce energy? Why does that change over time? How can we get rid of dead cells that usually damage healthy cells? Uh, loss of stem cell activity, of course, is our interest. Uh, we want to look at how communications in the body changes, how we can reset more genes to a more youthful state, solve the telomere problem, control inflammation and oxidative stress, get the cells into coherence where they won't age, and something called biophotons, which we'll talk about. But this is an example. Uh, you've seen this before. This was from one of our X39 studies that we did. And I bring this up because this was the brain scan of a 77-year-old woman, and in a matter of three to six weeks, she had a radical transformation in the uh, health and function of her brain. And most people would think, well, I get to 77, you know, I'm on the last stretch of life. No, we can still reverse signs and symptoms of aging no matter how old you are. So there's a lot to be excited about. So uh, let's, take a, let's take a moment. We want to hear from a scientist in the age reversal community, and then we're going to talk about some research that LifeWave is doing. Thank you. The problems that the world faces, uh, one is the environment, and the other is aging. For centuries, we've sought out mythical elixirs, holy grails, anything to put off the ravages of time, or at least cling on to our youth. Our fears and insecurities turned into big business. While recapturing our youth might be a bit of a stretch, scientists are now making serious claims about reversing aging. We now have a scientific understanding of what's driving aging and, and we have ways that we can intervene. It's not anti-aging, it's reverse aging. It's taking the biology back in time. That's what we are doing. You're aging actually as soon as you, you're, you're born, even earlier than that. Uh, it just doesn't manifest as disease until it gets, you know, you get into your 40s and 50s and later. Uh, but that later stage of life, usually an 80-year-old male has four to five different diseases. But what's happening is that all tissues and organs are getting old. And what that means really, literally, is that they're not functioning optimally anymore. And so you become susceptible to breaks and cells lose their way and they grow crazy and they, you end up with cancer as well. The last five years, 10 years of life typically are not something you'd wish on your, your enemies, let alone your loved ones. You don't get heart disease typically in a 20 or 30 year old. And the reason is that the, the tissues are young and they can rejuvenate and heal. So if you took somebody who's 50, 60, 70, and if you could reverse their age, the majority of these diseases would just go away. And so aging is the root cause of these diseases. We've given them names, but really they should be manifestations of aging. Professor David Sinclair and his team of scientists at Harvard are certain that the pain and suffering of old age isn't something we should accept. What we want to do is to keep all organs and tissues healthier at the same time for as long as possible. If we can do it in make a mouse or a rat, even a dog live like that and die quickly at the end, can we do it in people? Uh, can we do it with medicines? And what would the world look like if we could achieve that? This world is probably closer than you think. Research in anti-aging has advanced significantly in recent years, mainly down to the establishment of the hallmarks of aging. There's telomere shortening, there's loss of stem cells, there's DNA damage, there's senescent cells, zombie cells that accumulate. And then there's what I work on in part, which is called the epigenome. Understanding the relationship between these hallmarks is the major challenge. The epigenome is the control system for the genome. And we think that a large part of aging, and possibly the reason that other parts of the body go wrong, uh, is that the epigenome becomes dysregulated. And what I mean by that is, 
when you're a young child or an embryo, your cells are told to be a certain cell type. A nerve cell in the brain, when you're young, stays a nerve cell for most of your life. But over time, these nerve cells in our eye, in our brain, start to lose their identity. Their epigenome becomes dysregulated. And that's what we think is driving a lot of the aging process. Or what we did was we had a gene therapy where we turned on three genes that are normally only turned on in very young humans and mice. We decided to put them into the, the eye of mice to see if we could rejuvenate their eyes. And it worked. It really worked. We, those nerve cells went back to a young age. They were healthier. And we restored the eyesight of those mice, those old mice. My colleagues and I have proven that you can reverse aging. It's just a question of, of when and how do we apply this to human disease and eventually to aging itself. We've created our own nightmare because we've only addressed one part of the body at a time with the medicines, uh, typically. And the number of people over 65 is over the planet outnumbers the number of babies under five. And that's the first time in recorded and probably human history of the last few million years. Now, we've got to have a lot of older people. So what are we going to do? We can either let them get old and just sit around and waiting, wait to die. Or we could keep them healthy and have vibrant people in their 80s traveling the world, looking after families, being productive members of society. And that's a much better case, both socially for the individual, of course, and their families, but also economically. A number of countries now have more older people than young, and the country has to pay for those people. And whether they're going to be costing millions of dollars uh, per family to look after, or they're going to be productive members and, and die really quickly, it's up to us. Uh, and it's a race against time. It's a worry. It really could bring down uh, the growth of most countries. The work that we just published and a couple of my colleagues have published as well shows that it is possible to reset the age of complex tissues in the body. We've seen the eye, uh, my colleagues have done the brain, the spleen. We can partially take ourselves back to being younger without them turning into something horrible like a tumor. And that can be done safely, at least in mice. And I would say most likely in humans as well, because we've done human cells, in, at least in the dish, human brain cells. So what does that mean? That means that uh, we have a reset switch for aging. And if we can safely turn that reset switch on in the body, uh, it's an exciting future that means that Diseases that were once impossible to, to cure or even treat, such as blindness, are now on the table as something we could tackle. Okay. So now you get to take a look at what is happening behind the closed doors of our LifeWave laboratory. Um, so... How about that David Sinclair uh, saying, someday we will have human age reversal. That gives us hope, right? When we have scientists mainstream now that are saying that it's possible. Let's see how we've done. Oops. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about not just the patches, okay? So the game plan here is that we are going to be releasing new patches in the future. Of course, we're commemorating X49 today. Uh, and we will continue to release patches in the future as long as it makes sense. But there is other technology that we're developing that we want to release so we can get this technology out there and continue to expand the business opportunity and help as many people as possible. Uh, so, thank you. And I'd like you all to think about, as you're seeing some of these things, how would this change our business opportunity, right? It's, it's worth thinking about because as we migrate to adding... ...things that are, let's say, devices in addition to patches, how do we want to uh, accommodate our business model 
how do we want to accommodate our offerings? These are important things to think about. And then also, let's think about our, uh, our goal of wanting to make the planet better in the process. Uh, you're going to see some things tomorrow that I think you'll find very interesting and surprising, uh, but it fits into this overarching view that we are in the extraordinary position of having life-changing, global-changing technology. And this is a responsibility that we don't want to take lightly. So how can we change the world around us? I'd like you to be thinking about that. So first thing is we already have a product that induces partial age reversal. It's X39. And X39 does this by resetting about one-third of the human genome to a younger, healthier state. This research work was done by Dr. Lauren Picard over a period of nearly 50 years, and he should absolutely get a Nobel Prize for his discovery. Um, so as you read through a number of his journals and his papers, one of the things that you see is that uh, with respect to stem cell activity, copper peptide has the ability to reset genes associated with the nervous system and even associated with repair of DNA, which, as it turns out, has become critically important to our overall health. So we already have a product that resets uh, our cells to a more youthful state. So the goal now is how can we get 100% of our genome back to a more youthful state? Because that means no matter what your age is, as your cells divide, they will divide as younger, healthier cells. So besides the laboratory testing, do we see any other evidence of this in real life? And you've all seen these uh, testimonials many times on webinars where people use X39 for a year or then two years and there's this dramatic change in appearance. So keep in mind that this is not cosmetic, that these changes are occurring inside the body. What can happen within two or three months even is remarkable. We see firmness, improvement in uh, collagen production in the skin, tightening even a more healthy glow. This is one of our members in Japan. Um, and the goal here, of course, is we want to people to be healthy. Having the cosmetic benefits, having people look more youthful is wonderful. But, you know, the underlying effect is this is improving our health. Here's another result within just a few months of using X39. So it's so important uh, in business building that we have our customers and our distributors take a baseline photo and then photos monthly or however long you like uh, at different increments so you can document this for yourself and for your team. And this was the very first youth renewal um, testimonial that we received. This woman is from Denmark. I know we have some friends in Denmark watching virtually today. At 93 years old, she was given X39 by her daughter, who's a LifeWave distributor. And at the time, uh, her daughter was thinking, well, I want to help my mom, and maybe this patch will improve her health. And no one expected that she would have this dramatic improvement in her appearance in only two months. So we see these effects today. So this is real. So now let's take a look at some new technology that we're creating for age reversal. And I do have a confession to make. Um, I've been keeping a secret from all of you for the past three years. Um, we have already reversed aging in part of the cell in human beings. Uh, so I'm going to share those lab results with you. Uh, now, I do want to mention X49 just briefly. X49, which you're going to be hearing a lot more about, is our next step towards age reversal. It provides some very unique benefits. Some of you have already got a chance to experience it. 
uh, and you're gonna be hearing about that in more detail. I just didn't wanna take the time right this second to get into it. So we've done a study over the last three years on 45 people and we broke this down into groups of 15. And we were, this was uh, done with a gold sand, a standard uh, doing blood testing. And for those of you that are technically oriented, we use the gold standard in telomere testing from a company called Repeat Diagnostics. So if you look at uh, any studies on lengthening telomeres, Repeat Diagnostics, they will continue to come up. And what we wanted to find out was whether or not if we gave them this product, um, would this product have any effect on lifespan? So that's what we wanted to see. So first, what are the telomeres? Let's just do a quick recap. So telomeres are rods which are on the ends of the chromosomes and they control the number of times the cells can divide. This is known as the Hayflick limit. And the cells can divide, let's say, roughly 50 times or so. And by the time we get to age 75, the telomeres are no longer there and whatever cells we have are what we have for the rest of our lives. So if we want to exceed a maximum lifespan of 120, we have to solve the problem, how do you keep the cells dividing? Now, let's say you're already in your 70s, your 80s, you may say to me, well, David, I don't want to be 200 years old and look the way I do now, right? I actually, I don't want to just be 80 forever, right? I, I want to reverse aging. And so you're going to see something really cool about this. So, but essentially, if we lengthen the telomeres in a controlled fashion, we will extend lifespan, right? And we see lots of examples of that in nature. One of the secrets of lobsters and planaria and hydractinia is that they can continue to produce telomerase and lengthen telomeres. So let's use a reference on this. Again, we're gonna go mainstream and look at Stanford University, uh, where in 2015, they published a paper on using a RNA drug for telomere lengthening. Now here's something that is incredibly exciting, is that what they found in their research, among other things, is that when you lengthen telomeres, the cells start to behave like younger, healthier cells. So this may mean that lengthening telomeres resets at least some of the genes to a more youthful state. So if we can lengthen telomeres, we can also maintain and restore youth. That's what it looks like. Now, how successful was Stanford? Uh, they were able to, using this drug, uh, and we don't know what the side effects of the drug were, could have been you know, heart disease, cancer, and death, we don't know. Um, but drugs have side effects, right? So, let's see, we lengthened the telomeres, and they were able to get 1,000 nucleotides of regeneration, that's a minimum of five years. So, that's really pretty good. Um, when we look at research that's being done in the age reversal community by people like Bill Andrews, where they're taking a gene modification technique, uh, Bill Andrews estimates that his therapy will cost about $2 million per injection to recapture about 10 years of age, right? So you really can't put any money on age reversal. People, if they have the money and you can guarantee that you're gonna regenerate them, they'll pay that. So keep that in mind when you see this, about what we're gonna charge for this product. <laughs> David Jumper. <laughs> um, okay, so this was one of the studies that we did. The studies were very consistent. Um, so this was a, our first study actually into this and I remember where I was when we got these results back. Uh, one person over a period of six months dropped out. That's really normal in a clinical study. Uh, we had one person out of the 15 that didn't respond. And that's also pretty normal in a study. It could be a lot of reasons. Maybe uh, they don't have a good diet. Maybe they abuse alcohol. You'll always have non-responders in a study. But the really key thing was using this technique 
we were able to get 13 out of those 14 people to respond. Now, here's what was exciting. We had an average in six months, the average was 8.5% telomere lengthening, which is over eight years of age reversal in six months. So, some of you may be thinking, if that was the average, what did people on the outer end do? Now, telomeres will shrink by about a quarter of a percent to one percent per year, right? So that's the rate that would be normal. So if we're getting any increase, uh, like at the low end, we had people that got about a two percent gain in telomeres. That means they're not responding as well, but they're still reversing in age relative to the telomeres. But what about people over on the other end? How did they do? This was really shocking. Uh, we had a woman that had a 16% increase in six months and a gentleman with an 18% increase. So um, that's really exciting because it shows what's possible over on the upper end. So some of the things that we want to study is why were, the, why were these people getting such a remarkable response above the average? Okay, so that's one product that we have coming in the future for telomere lengthening. Um, now, please don't send me emails on Monday asking when this product is coming out. <laughs> I will not respond. Um, and it's not because I want to be rude. Uh, but we don't have an estimate yet for when we're going to release it, but you'll know when. Okay, so what other technology are we developing? Well, we talked about ants and that ants get infected with a tapeworm. Uh, and it's important to know, we actually began looking at this more than 10 years ago. And the Eon patch came out as a result. Uh, where we were looking at how the queen ant is going to live five times longer than a worker ant. Queen bee lives 50 to 60 times longer than a worker bee. What exactly is going on there? So in the Temnothorax ant, they get infected with a symbiotic parasite. So normally we think of parasites as being very destructive, and certainly they can be. But in this instance in nature, there is a condition of symbiosis where the parasite, what they're getting from the ant is food and shelter and protection, and what they're giving back to the ant in return is a five-time increase in their lifespan and the ant does not age. Now, there's another side to this story that we're not going to get into at the moment. Uh, but uh, what we've been able to do is uncover why this is happening and develop a device that, just for the sake of argument, we will call it a biomimetic enhancer. That's not the name of it, but I had to call it something just for now uh, because we're in the middle of uh, filing patents on this. But it's basically designed to mimic this natural process uh, where we can, without a parasite, uh, we can induce changes in our gene expression uh, that help to make some very, 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 very favorable changes in the cell. So this is a piece of equipment we have in our lab. We have a number of different diagnostic equipments that we use in small pilot studies to see. Uh, will new technology work? So this one is called a biopulsar, and it will scan over 40 different regions in the body looking at bioelectrical activity, and uh, then it will translate it into an image like this that's kind of easy to read. So this is an image from a gentleman that is uh, in his late 50s. Uh, he exercises, eats right, uh, He's the CEO of a multinational network marketing company. Uh, and um, so he decided to be kind enough to try uh, this thing out before anybody else. And that, this is what happened after 30 seconds of applying this device. What we see is an immediate uptick 
in mitochondrial function, which we measure on another device called the MENLA scan, but there's an immediate increase in ATP production in different tissues in the organs, and we measure it on the biopulsar, we can see this very, very quickly. After 90 seconds, there's been a very, very dramatic uptick now on energy production throughout the body. So as we go into clinical studies with this, we, we will be looking to see if there's any indication of telomere lengthening, uh, how mitochondrial function changes over time, and then of course we're gonna do gene mapping because we wanna see our genes being reset to a more youthful state. Uh, with this device, the type of things we wanna know is what's the dosing, right? So how often should people use this and for how much time? So those are the type of things that we have to find out before we can deploy it over to market. But we see a really, uh, really powerful effect with that. Okay. So we talked about the lobsters before, and um, I did make a really incredible uh, discovery with this. We have a physicist on our staff, and he double-checked all of these numbers, and we can't, kept coming up with exactly the same conclusion, is that while most scientists are looking at the telomere activity within lobsters, which is a valid model, as it turns out, there's some biophysics involved here. In other words, the shape, the structure, the design of the lobster produces an energy field that when properly synchronized as it is, uh, prevents the tissue from breaking down. So we created, using this uh, math and this model, we created a new technology to mimic the lobster's energy field. And um, since we were experimenting with ants, we wanted to see if we exposed ants uh, to this effect, what would happen. No torture involved. So we got, uh, these are red harvester ants. Uh, we put them into a uh, colony and we have a control and a test so we can compare the two. So we had a treatment group and this is what happened after a few days. The picture in the control and the treatment group were taken after the exact period of time, after three days of exposure. So what we saw is that the ants in the treatment group became much, much more active. So this is, and everybody wants really active ants, right? And <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, the goal of this then is what we believe we're observing is that we were able to transfer energy from this device to the ants that they could use and upregulate their mitochondrial function and uh, turn that into useful work. That's what we believe we're observing. So the next series of steps is that we look at ants while they're alive um, under a microscope and we want to compare whether or not the treatment group is not aging compared to the controls which are aging. So we're very, very early on in this research, uh, but it has in fact worked so, uh, so far. Um, now I'm gonna show you something else that's really interesting with this, and we've done these experiments on metal. And what's so interesting about this is that this is going beyond a simple biological mechanism. In other words, we've been able to take this technique and create materials that never existed before. So this is a lump of common tin uh, that we get from a laboratory supply. And what we do is we melt the tin down and we expose it to an energy field. In this case, this was made with a combination of a uh, electromagnetic and longitudinal field. And when we process it, it forms a new and novel metallic oxide that looks very, very similar to gold. You may have noticed. Um, so we have a video on this that we're going to be showing you uh, at some point in the conference. That'll be tomorrow. But when we melt the metal down, 
This is the first layer that's formed. It's a layer of gold. As we continue to expose the metal to this energy field, it starts to go through an additional energy shift and now it starts to bring out these orange colors and even some streaks of purple. It'll then go to a darker gold and then the final transition goes to a blue film and then a purple film. So we're creating these entire new metallic oxide species. So we sent them out, we have a laboratory that we work with and uh, two metallurgists and uh, one of the techniques that we have here that we use is called X-ray diffraction. Uh, we also use um, an SEM to analyze these materials amongst other things. But what was so exciting for us is that when they went through X-ray diffraction and they're compared with, I think it's about 60,000 compounds, this comes up as something unidentifiable that never existed before. So we were able to prove out that this technique that we're using to hopefully extend human lifespan and reverse aging uh, does in fact produce an extraordinarily novel effect. Okay. Okay, so the, the bottom line is that while this company was founded on light therapy patches, we want to go far beyond that and give you an array of tools that you can use in your daily life uh, for maintaining your health and reversing human aging. Uh, there's a lot of questions that we think through of what are these devices going to look like? Uh, how are people going to incorporate them into their daily lives? Is this something you wear? Is it something you put on your desk? Do you sleep on this at night? You know, there's all these kind of questions and development work uh, but we're extraordinarily excited that the principles that we're discovering work, they're demonstrable, and that they're repeatable. And that's going to be the very, very beginning of now translating this into a product that you'll be able to have someday. So where do we go from here? Well, since we're here in 2021, uh, let's create something that you can do today to begin the process of reversing aging and having the best health that you can so you'll be ready when these new technologies come out. So let's hear from another scientist in the age reversal community and then we're going to come back and talk about a plan that you can implement starting today to begin reversing human aging. All right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. So this business of how long people who are alive today may live all began in, I'm going to say, something like 2002. So I had come up with the idea of comprehensive damage repair and convinced myself that it was feasible back in 2000. And then in about 2002, a Dutch journalist named Theo Rickel contacted me and asked me, how long I expected to be the life expectancy, the average lifespan, of people born in the year 2100. And it turned out that he was asking this question to every gerontologist that he could get hold of. Anyway, long and short of it was, I said, well, probably about 5,000. Um, essentially what I was doing was I was taking the assumption that by then we would very probably have defeated aging to the extent of staying one step ahead of the problem, this methuselarity thing. And that therefore the risk of death per year needed to be presumed to stay the same however long ago somebody was born. So if one looks at the risk of death today in early adulthood, then it's very low. If you reach, let's say, the age of 26 in the Western world, then your chance of not reaching the age of 27 is less than one in a thousand. And that number, of course, is going to decline because we're going to get better at stopping people from dying in other causes like car accidents or whatever. So I thought, well, okay, let's throw in a modest factor there. And, you know, 5,000 is a pretty conservative number. So that's the number I gave. I still stand by it, absolutely. I think that it is extremely likely that people born today will, on average, live to 1,000. 
I think there's at least a 50-50 chance that your average person who's 30 years old today will live to a thousand. But not because we are within a couple of decades of completely being able to repair all damage, only because we're within a couple of decades, with, the, with reasonable probability of course, of getting to this methuselarity point where we're staying one step ahead of the problem. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it has caused an enormous amount of waves in two different communities in two different ways. The, um, what, the reason it dominates my public profile is first of all because somehow or other the media is terribly fixated on longevity despite however often I say that longevity is simply a side effect of health. Right? You don't stay alive without staying healthy, and this just seems to pass people by. They much prefer to focus on the longevity aspect. The other reason why it's been a problem is because my colleagues within the field, people who study the biology of aging, are desperately petrified of being associated with such numbers. For two reasons. Number one, they feel that such numbers make their field sound like science fiction, which they feel is, you know, uh, likely to hinder their ability to get public funding for it. Number two, they feel that it's utterly unjustified scientifically. And of course, from the point of view of the biology of aging, it is indeed absolutely unjustified. I would never deny that. What I'm doing when I'm talking about the achievement of the methuselarity is I'm talking about comparing the progress that typical technologies make after some initial breakthrough is made. So I'm saying, yes, I think we can reach the methuselarity by particular ways to do with actual biology as we have it today within the next couple of decades with high probability. But I'm absolutely not saying what ways we will subsequently use to keep ahead of the curve. I'm just saying that technologies tend to keep ahead of the curve and therefore that it would be absurd to pretend that that's not going to happen. And my colleagues never deny this. They never say, oh, this is actually wrong for this specific reason. They just don't want to have anything to do with it. They just run away very fast. Interesting character, Aubrey de Grey. <laughs> very interesting character. Okay. Uh, so let's get into an action plan now of what we can do to protect our health and get the maximum lifespan possible based on what's available today. So let's take a moment and review why we're aging in the first place. It's so important that we have an understanding about what's going wrong so we can provide solutions to this. So first thing is uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. And this is where by about age 50 or so, people start to slow down and they generally get tired and fatigue and they attribute it to aging. Well, this is the process where the energy centers in your cells, the mitochondria, are not producing as much energy as they did when you were younger. And also very significantly, we start to shift the metabolism in the cells where we're getting energy from sugar instead of fats. So that's a problem we start to accumulate dead cells. So when we're young, God bless you, when we're young and healthy, we will be uh, disposing of dead cells. But as we age, because the energy production declines, our ability to get rid of these old cells begins to decline as well. So instead of eliminating them, we accumulate them, and these dead cells start to induce damage into the healthy cells. So that fellow that you just saw, Aubrey de Grey, that's his area of specialty, is developing drugs to get rid of these old unhealthy cells. Uh, of course we know, anybody in LifeWave knows, that as we age, stem cell activity declines, so we should have something to improve our stem cell activity. Um, there's a breakdown in communications in the cells. Uh, this is evidenced by diseases such as asthma, and famously arthritis, where healthy immune cells will now begin to attack other healthy tissue and we get inflammation uh, and pain as a result. 
So there's a breakdown in communications and uh, there's reasons for this that we want to address. Genes get turned from a youthful state to an age state. So in other words, there's genes that should be on that get turned off and there's genes that should be off that get turned on. So we want to be able to reset the human genome uh, if we're going to have successful age reversal. We've already talked about telomere shortening. We want to solve that because we need to be able to keep the cells dividing if we want to live to be over 120. We have to have ways of managing inflammation and oxidative stress. Now, uh, biochemicals in our body like superoxide, hydroxyl ion, hydrogen peroxide, ozone, these are all really important things because they are going to kill cancer cells, bacteria, viruses, but when they get out of control they, in, a, in a chronic state, they can damage healthy tissue. The same is true of inflammation. Inflammation is an important part of tearing down healthy tissue and making way for new healthy cells. But as we age, the ability of our body to clear out this inflammation declines. So we've got to, we don't want to get rid of inflammation or oxidative stress, we want to manage it properly. As the cells age, they begin to shrink and this changes the coherence of the cell. So what this means is, you know, think of when you buy a brand new home, everything is great, uh, but then after five years, 10 years, 20 years, things start to break down, the structure of the house begins to change. And this is what happens in the cell. And this changes the internal dynamics of how the cells work. So we have to restore balance and coherence to the cell. And then this final one, which is biophotons. So this was a phenomena that was uh, discovered over 40 years ago. And biophotons are highly coherent wavelengths of light that are emitted from the DNA. They seem to almost spontaneously appear from nowhere. That's a separate story. But biophotons are used to induce communications in the cells. And as we age and the structure of the cells change, these biophotons leak from the body. And uh, this is part of why communications in the body breaks down. So that's something else that we have to solve. So those are nine things amongst others. So the question is, what can we do now, right? We don't wanna wait five, 10, 20 years. We wanna start doing things today. So how do we solve mitochondrial dysfunction? As it turns out, there's a whole bunch of things that we can do to restore the health of our mitochondria. Uh, first, this company was built on energy enhancer. And the energy, in, uh, energy patches upregulate mitochondrial function. They help the body get more energy from fat. So this is very much a anti-aging technology. Uh, we did a clinical study uh, with Dr. Frank Schallenberger and Homer Nazaran uh, way back in 2005, where we saw that fat burning went up uh, over 20% within the first 20 minutes of using Energy Enhancer. So this is gonna help improve mitochondrial function. Um, we have to have I'm sorry you hear me say this all the time, but we have to have a proper foundation for our health. Part of that is regular exercise. Embrace it, love it, do it, uh, get started. But uh, when we exercise, especially resistance training, uh, this is going to increase the number of mitochondria in our muscle tissue. And uh, that's why when people exercise, uh, they feel great. Proper nutrition. Again, can't emphasize this enough that having a healthy diet the majority of the time, let's use the 80-20 rule here, right? Cut you all some slack. But having, um, having proper nutrition, thinking about and structuring your day, what nutrients you're gonna get, how you supplement, uh, that foundation is just so critically important. 
And uh, you're not going to achieve optimum health, longevity with, without a healthy diet. It's just not going to happen. So please be conscious of that. Now, there's nutrients, very specific nutrients that we can use to upregulate mitochondrial function. This was discovered by Bruce Ames at UC Berkeley now. Uh, I think almost 20 years ago was his first discovery. But it's the combination of the amino acid acetyl-L-carnitine and also the antioxidant alpha-lipoic acid. You combine them and we see an increase in mitochondrial function. Uh, NAD, this is certainly a uh, very exciting development in the past number of years. David Sinclair, who you saw a little bit earlier, has spent an awful lot of time researching NAD, as have researchers at Stanford. So NAD is one of the energy-carrying molecules in the cell, and it's been shown that when we upregulate NAD and also more specifically balance the ratio of NAD to NADH, we see a reversal of the age of the cell and improvement in mitochondrial function. Now, if only if someone could invent a patch to elevate NAD, boy, that would really be cool. Something, uh, something like that. Um, that's a patch. I didn't say what it does, it's a patch. Oh, wait a minute, that's a white one on the left side of my wrist. All right, never mind. Uh, okay, and then... Uh, What's coming in the future, of course, is we will have, what we've seen in our initial research is that tech that we're developing uh, certainly seems to upregulate mitochondrial function. So what that means is that even though these new technologies are designed to reverse the aging process, because they improve energy production in the mitochondria, you get to start experiencing the health benefits the very first day you'll start to feel more energy, and so forth. Okay, and it'll, I would imagine also re uh, will relieve pain. Okay, so accumulation of dead cells. If we're accumulating dead cells as we age, how do we get rid of them? Okay, there's actually quite a few solutions. Clinically, we can see that exercise and fasting are things that we can do today to remove waste that should not be in our bodies. So if uh, you've never tried something like intermittent fasting, I would definitely encourage it. Uh, these findings, by the way, as you can see over here, uh, are showing that... Nope, go back, sorry. These findings were showing that fasting uh, for a 15-hour period of time can increase removal of dead cells by about five times over normal. Okay, fisetin, this is a natural compound found in peppers. Um, you can't eat enough peppers to get enough fisetin, uh, but there's some exciting areas of research now where this is showing that this is something that we can do today that's natural, not a drug, that will help to remove old uh, dying cells from the body. X39. There is a pathway, it is a limited pathway, but there is a pathway uh, in X39 for flipping gene expression to uh, help to remove dead tissue from the body. So we're getting some of those benefits by using X39. All right, loss of stem cell activity. We don't need to spend <laughs> much time on this since we've done so many webinars on it. But for those of you that are new to LifeWave, um, X39 stimulates the skin with light. That light causes an increase in the amount of copper peptide in the body called GHKCU. And this peptide will reset thousands of genes to a more youthful state. And in the process, uh, one of the genes that we turn on is the P63 gene, and this induces mobilization or activation of stem cells. Uh, so the benefit to this is not only do we get stem cells to participate in things like wound healing, uh, but because those cells are being reset to a more youthful state, now they can make more collagen and support overall tissue repair. So now, how do we solve this breakdown in cell communications? This is a very serious problem because if we could 
manage cell communications, then that would mean uh, we would have effective treatments for things like arthritis. And as mentioned earlier, arthritis, asthma are very good examples of how healthy tissue, how the immune system will attack healthy tissue because the communications are not working. Okay, and so why is this occurring in the first place? We can kind of see the chain of events. The cells begin to shrink over time, uh, and this will show up as dehydration. At about age 25, the fibroblasts, which make collagen, start to age. So aging actually starts at about 25. And as the collagen production in our cells break down, the cytoskeleton, which uh, is what's responsible for the volumization of the cell, that begins to decline. And as a result, as the cell shrinks, our mitochondrial function decreases, our ability then to manage inflammation and oxidative stress with natural intracellular antioxidants like glutathione and SOD, that diminishes, and now we go into a chronic state of inflammation and oxidative stress. Okay, so that's like a basic chain of events. So if we want to improve cell communications, we've got to manage inflammation and oxidative stress. Fortunately, there are solutions. At this point, based on clinical studies, everybody should be taking a glutathione supplement. Um, I have to recommend for purpose of legal liability, it'd be NAC, uh, because we see in clinical studies that NAC is an effective treatment and preventative for COVID-19, right? We see that NAC uh, can help to prevent serious side effects of COVID. So everybody should be taking that. Uh, curcumin is really interesting because I know we have a lot of men here. There, almost all men fa face problems with their prostate as they age and modern medicine doesn't really offer very many solutions for this. Uh, well, uh, I have met medical doctors that use an IV of curcumin and DMSO. So curcumin is, of course, from turmeric, and it's a very, very powerful anti-inflammatory. So um, curcumin, it should be something that most people use. Now, DMSO is something that's been written off by the FDA. It's kind of been bastardized by the pharma companies. They hate it because it's cheap, it's inexpensive, you can't patent it, it's natural, and it is a broad-spectrum anti-inflammatory it's been used successfully in treating diseases like cancer. And in this particular case, uh, DMSO is a solvent. You can take it orally or by IV. And um, doctors that I have met have been able to take men with very, very high PSA levels, let's say over 20, and bring them back into normal range in a matter of weeks using uh, IVs of curcumin and DMSO. Um, Vitamin C, obviously antioxidant, and Eon. Um, Eon, we have seen, reduces all types of inflammatory stress. So that's something that just about everybody should use, and it, it's perfectly paired with X39. Okay, so how do we then reset the human genome? So, of course, we know that we got a first start on this, with X39, where we can reset thousands of genes to a more youthful state. And the goal in our research is we want to go farther, and we want to be able to reset all of the genes to a more youthful state. And let's think about this just for a second. If we could reset all of the genes to a more youthful state, one of the many benefits that we would get from this is that it would balance out our hormones right? So we wouldn't have to worry about medication. For men, you wouldn't have to worry about declining libido, declining muscle strength, declining testosterone as you age. Women, you could get your hormones balanced, whatever's going on with you. I don't know. <laughs> it's impossible to understand. 
whatever the heck that is. <laughs> all right. But we can balance all those things out. All right. What do we do also in the meantime other than X39? Olive oil. This is such interesting research. It's uh, prior to this discovery, it was believed that resveratrol um, was a great antioxidant. And then David Sinclair discovered, no, it's not because resveratrol is a powerful antioxidant. It's really not. It's that it's able to reset uh, one or two of the sirtuin genes back to a more youthful state. So its power is in being a gene modulator. Well, now it's been, discover been discovered that actually olive oil is better than resveratrol. And it used to be that the benefits of the Mediterranean diet were attributed to the monounsaturated fats in olive oil. And of course, while monounsaturated fats are obvious uh, anti-inflammatories and we should get these in our diet, um, the fact of the matter now, it's being shown that olive oil can reset genes to a more youthful state. And that's the power of olive oil in our diet and our health. Um, there is a lot of counterfeit product on the market, unfortunately. So you want to make sure that you have organic, authentic, extra virgin olive oil. And of course, fasting, right? Uh, again, if you are looking at using something like fasting as a tool to help clear out old dying cells that shouldn't be there, another benefit that you're getting is that it's doing this by resetting genes to a more youthful state. This is actually a survival mechanism. So if we go back, you know, thousands of years, let's say, don't have to go back that far, when there was a shortage of food, um, in order for human beings to survive, we had to turn on genes associated with youth, health, survival, so we could change the hormone production in the body and upregulate things like testosterone and growth hormone and upregulate repair mechanisms so we could survive until food showed up. So um, fasting is a very important and very easy way, it doesn't cost us anything, to turn on uh, these genes and get some incredible benefits. In that regard, also exercise. Uh, this is, again, part of evolution, how when we exercise, we are essentially telling our body that we are alive, we're here, we need muscle tissue, we need our strength and stamina, and uh, so we turn on that process of anabolic metabolism and all the hormones that are associated with it. So exercise, in addition to the obvious benefits, we are turning on genes that are associated with a young, healthy state. You know, uh, probably most of you know who Jack LaLanne was, right? Yeah, he lived to about 98 or so and was exercising, you know, right up to the end. God bless him. And then, of course, the new technology that we're developing in our lab, uh, one of the principal goals of this is we want to use this as a technique to improve mitochondrial function and use that as a pathway to reset genes to a more youthful state. So, solving telomere shortening, you've already seen that we have done that, but what can you do today? Well, this was important work that was out of Israel uh, where they put people into hyperbaric chambers, which is a wonderful therapy anyway, but they came up with a specific technique on using hyperbaric chambers for telomere lengthening. And what this apparently seems to be linked to is that when you're saturating the blood with oxygen, it causes oxidative stress, and the oxidative stress acts as, as a signaling mechanism to induce stem cells to come out of the bone marrow and start to heal and regenerate, and in the process, that's turning on, um, turning on a number of uh, processes, but one of them is in telomere lengthening. So this is uh, 
not inexpensive, not expensive. It's very time consuming. You can see the results here in the study. Uh, after about 60 treatments, and uh, treatments are 30 minutes to an hour. So it would certainly be a lot easier to put a patch on or something like that uh, for telomere lengthening. Uh, but we have hyperbaric oxygen chambers today. Now, the carnosine patch, uh, this is really interesting. Uh, with carnosine, it will protect telomeres from degrading. So it seems as if carnosine is not directly involved with telomere lengthening, but rather acting as an antioxidant, or maybe it's doing something with gene expression, but it's protecting the rods on the end of the chromosomes from breaking down, and it's not insignificant. In mammals, uh, in uh, tests with mice, it's been shown to lengthen telomeres and lifespan by about 30 to 40 percent. So that's awfully good, right? Maybe that just having carnosine is going to lengthen lifespan up to 150 or more. Who knows? We have to see. And there's certainly many, many benefits to carnosine. Um, for those of you that are vegan or vegetarian, traditionally, a vegan diet is very low in the amino acid alanine. And uh, carnosine is made, it's a dipeptide, so it's made of beta alanine and histidine. So we usually find alanine in high amounts in red meat, eggs, dairy products, fish, chicken. Uh, you can find them in soy um, and beans, but if you're a vegan or vegetarian, I would encourage you to take a uh, beta alanine supplement just to make sure that you're getting the raw materials you need to make carnosine. Okay, um, inflammation and stress. We've already discussed Eon as a broad spectrum anti-inflammatory, and there's many other solutions that are available today. We can reduce our levels of inflammation with glutathione, curcumin, DMSO, um, and also one that we didn't mention before was vitamin D. Vitamin D is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. Um, everyone should be taking it now because of COVID, because we know over 80% of the people that die of COVID have a vitamin D deficiency. It's pennies to produce, and there's no reason uh, why people should not be taking it or the government providing it. Um, I want a mandate for vitamin D. I'll take that mandate. Okay, that's a mandate we could live with, right? Okay, all right, solving loss of cell coherence. I'll just move through this quickly uh, since we've kind of talked about it. But what solutions do we have? Well, when the cell begins to degrade, it's from a reduction in collagen production. And there's a few things that we can do. Um, first, we can take collagen protein, and especially if you have a loss of cartilage, let's say in the knee or the shoulder, I'd recommend that you take a collagen protein supplement to support the repair uh, of that damaged tissue. X39 uh, will turn on collagen production in the body. It's one of the things that stem cells do really well. We don't really talk about this too often, but as it turns out, our Nirvana product will turn on collagen production, specifically the pills, um, not the patches. And um, yeah, those are, those are some things that we can do today. Vitamin C, by the way, again, for those of you that may have had loss of cartilage in your joints, I'd recommend taking a collagen protein with vitamin C, um, along with using our patches to help manage inflammation. And you'll be amazed. Um, orthopedic surgeons will say, well, once you lose cartilage, uh, you can't regrow it. Well, I would say it got there somehow. Um, but it turns out our body can make cartilage just fine. Okay. And then uh, the final one, I'll go through this quickly because I'm running a little bit over. Biophoton. So just think of this in terms of our body emits light. So what spiritualists have told us for thousands of years that we are beings of light is absolutely true. And the light comes from 
within our cells. And we can measure this today quite easily. So we did a study with Dr. Gaetan Chevalier uh, back more than 10 years ago now, and we've been working with him on many clinical studies. And uh, what we did was uh, we have a chamber that you put your hand into that there's no light, and you can measure light coming off the hand, or you can put people in an entire room, and uh, you can measure this. And so what we found was that using the energy patches would pull the body into a state of coherence and we could begin to normalize the emission of biophotons. So energy patches are anti-aging patches. Um, what do we want to avoid in this plan? Well, my final message to you is don't be angry. Uh, if you are angry at some things, it's okay. There's a lot of things that we should be angry about today. But don't stay in a state of anger. Stay in a state of love. And uh, that's how we all should be. Okay. And there's the proof. So, um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your time. It is a real blessing to have you all here today, to be together as a community, and God bless all of you and your families. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.